Ever wonder why your local supermarket is set up the way it is? Follow us on our supermarket tour as we dig deeper into Loblaws and explore what it says about our food system. We chose Loblaws because it's close and convenient to our schools and homes. Parented by George Weston Limited, the chain owns over 15 different stores varying in size and audience, including well-known brands such as No Frills, Real Canadian Superstore, Shoppers Drug Mart, TNT, and more. As business students, we are always introduced to these firms from a business perspective and given examples of how these firms excel at core business functions such as marketing and supply chain. So we're here now to use this opportunity to view companies such as Loblaws through a food systems lens and see how the perspectives compare. This is why we chose aisle 1, going to the market, which examines the role of supermarkets in the food system. In particular, it focuses on supermarket ownership, the loss of control in the food system, and how supermarkets are designed to influence consumer purchases. The Loblaws on Church and Carlton is quite large. Standing at 85,000 square feet, the building has two entrances, which contrast the OPIRG report. The assumption is usually that supermarkets have only one entrance so they can control where consumers start to shop. However, this Loblaws offers a little bit more choice to consumers in terms of where they can start shopping. According to OPIRG, Extra large and deep shopping carts give the illusion that the whole cart for a few items is a waste, thus encouraging customers to purchase more items. However, Loblaws has three different options for its consumers to provide them with more flexible shopping choices. Once inside, we were immediately met with specialty items such as flowers and the bakery. This Loblaws was unique in that its layout is specialized to cater to different types of customers. Front and center were specialized takeout islands for the convenience of the on-the-go Toronto population. Towards the back walls were more traditional supermarket sections such as produce, meats, dry goods, and even non-food items for the prolonged shopper. We found that though this deviates slightly from the expected layouts of supermarket, this Loblaws is still the result of a corporate marketing strategy. The difference just goes to show how the company has really thought through the differences between the downtown customer from perhaps its suburban one. Products are strategically placed at eye level throughout the store to attain the attention of and cater to various types of shoppers. Competition for prime shelf space is aggressive. Brands pay the grocer additional funds to slot their products and product lines together for bundle purchases. Products are also strategically placed for boutique purchases. Kit now holds up the meatballs for spaghetti and the wine glasses, which are placed directly above. This showcases an authentic Italian meal that is both easy and convenient. Additional ancillary fees are paid for prime selling locations, such as chocolate. In this case, two different chocolate brands are represented back to back at the end of the aisle. However, it is evident which brand has paid more to get complete branding and differentiate itself over the others. Loblaws also strategically placed its shelves, which are stocked to the brim and designed to be restocked immediately to give the illusion of an endless aisle. According to OPIRG, consumers used to choose food by the way it looked, smelled, tasted, and felt. However, now they eat with their eyes. OPIRG may truly be right about this fact. Crudy grabs a packaged salad and then some broccoli from the neighboring shop. After looking at them both, she realizes 1. The packaged salad would be way more convenient to make and 2. The packaged food is more appealing than the other alternative. Even though the uncut, unpackaged broccoli would have been cheaper. Look at the framed quotes above all the bread. They're attempting to appeal to the consumer's emotions. Quotes such as, every day is a fresh start, from our familia to yours, and life needs more barbecue invoke good familial feelings and cause you to believe that this bread will lead to happy times. Secondly, promotional prices like here with the bread are a popular way to incentivize customers to buy more than one loaf of bread. As you can see here, the shelf with the juice on sale is first to have cleared out and same with the cheese. Moving on, this sign right here is a prime example of a patriotic ad. This will cause consumers to believe that they're supporting their country and its citizens by using the product. Look at all this packaging. Let's zoom in on one of them. Over here, they're selling different kinds of chocolate bars, but they're no ordinary bars. They apparently save lives. What better reason to invest in chocolate other than to pay it forward? We're sold. Over here, we have some of the most beautifully packaged milk. I don't even like flavored milk, but I was 80% convinced on buying these because of how nice the bottles felt and looked. Talk about fancy expensive packaging. 
The background music being played in the store was consistently upbeat and made the shopping experience feel more enjoyable. According to Muzak Holdings LLC, 66% of all buying decisions are made after the consumer enters the supermarket. While we aren't sure if all the songs at the store were derived from Muzak, Laplace did an excellent job with this music selection because as you can see, we thoroughly enjoyed our shopping experience. Let's talk about the lure of the supermarket now. We're currently standing in Loblaw's medicine aisle, and look! Here's a walk-in clinic, a pharmacy, and walk-in clinic side by side. How convenient! Over here, we have a wellness station. This truly creates a well-rounded health and well-being experience, sucking you in for longer than you may have originally wanted to be here. Here we have an ATM machine, placed smartly right before the checkout stations, as well as a customer service and a dry cleaning kiosk. Loblaws has made itself a one-stop shop for consumers to eradicate smaller competitors and provide as many non-food services as possible on top of their regular food services. Now, we can't forget about the amazing loyalty program Loblaws has for its consumers. The more we spend at Loblaws, the more PC points we're able to collect. And the more PC points we have, the more cash points we're able to redeem it for. This could mean free groceries if you rack up enough points. Sure makes me want to keep coming back. Talk about lore. Now that we've discussed in detail some of the specific features of the supermarket, I think it's time to take a step back and look at the big picture. What does all of this mean? Our team found that a lot of the claims made in the OPIRG were true when it came to how the supermarkets are structured. Much like Canada's telecommunications industry, the supermarket industry suffers from a lack of major competition. And due to the oligopolistic nature, there is an ongoing issue of these companies having a lot of control and decision-making power in how Canadians consume food. Over decades, these companies have shaped the way people access food and have played a huge part in distancing the average consumer from the origins of their food. While companies are now taking small steps to re-educate consumers about where their food comes from, like for example how Loblaws has tried to with its educational signage, it's still not enough to close the distance. Before we end the video, I think it's also important to address the somewhat biased stance that the OPIRG has taken on this matter. While we understand that there are negative impacts that supermarkets have had in terms of distancing, we find that the somewhat harsh and negative language being used when referring to supermarkets shows some unnecessary bias. It almost seems as though the text is romanticizing the good old days when people had to go to different stores to get different food items. I think the text could have done a better job being objective by acknowledging other changing factors in society today, such as the increase of women in the workforce, urbanization, and technological developments, which have also impacted the nature and operations of modern supermarkets. Going back to small individual stores is no longer practical, mainly because it's not what the urban consumer wants anymore. They create the convenience of going to a one-stop shop and being able to make quick decisions based on their trust and knowledge of brands. Moving forward, we can't just expect food companies to create all this change on their own. There needs to be a strong combined effort from companies, government policies, and most importantly, consumers casting their economic votes for us to see any real change in the current food system. Right as we were about to leave, we came across Lava's Nutella Cafe and couldn't resist. So we're gonna go and try out some chocolate crepes now. Bye, thank you for watching our tour.